What's up guys, I'm Astroco here doing a first place deck of fall of the OTS. Yeah, and who were we here with? Roy Norman. And what deck did you play? I played uh, Infernoid Zoo, but as I like to call it, 60 card zoo. Alright, um, what were your matchups like? Uh, round one I played another 60 card deck, it was a Paleozoic. And then I played uh, Zoo. Uh, Zoo. <laughs> uh, and then I played that new deck, uh, what are they called? The, uh, invoked? Yeah, the Invoked deck. What did you think about that? Um, it was good. Like, the cycling engine with the fusion is pretty good. Uh, it really just, it, it seemed like they were just trying to bring out the, uh, is it Clear Wing or Crystal Wing? I think it's Crystal. Crystal Wing. And then, uh, you know, just try and keep it on board, but if you just tribute it for a kaiju, they really can't, they don't have a comeback after that. Right. Uh, but it seemed pretty consistent. Uh, worked well for him, and then, uh, yeah, I think I played just like three zoo matchups, and then that Paleozoic. Yeah, and then in tops, my round one, I played the uh, the invoked deck again. Uh, he actually beat me a game earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, I two owed him in tops, and then I played against ABC. Two owed that. And then I played against uh, Kaiju Zoo, and I 2-0'd that. Damn, yeah. you were on fire. <laughs> yeah, I only lost two games the entire game. That's crazy, right? Oh, no. Oh, one of the games I lost was to, uh, I actually played against uh, Cosmo. Oh, okay. I lost one game to Cosmo. Understandably, because, you know. Cosmo Cosmo's pretty yeah. good this one. Yeah, man. they're big. You can't target them, you know. All right, so uh, uh, let's get in deck profile. Yeah. So, it's a pretty standard build. Uh, we got three Decatron. Three of the Spell Trap Popper. Three Harmadic, Pops Monsters. Two Devi. Two Anoshu. Uh, two of the Banishing Guy. I'm not going to try and pronounce the names because it'll come out terrible. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the guy that bounces a face up. One of the guy that removes a card from the extra deck. And one of the guy that can attack twice when it battles with a monster. Okay. And that is pretty much the Infernoid lineup. <laughs> Would you consider running more of the, of the one ofs and two ofs, or? Uh, no. Uh, I actually uh, got most of my build from uh, Billy Brakes' build at the YCS. <laughs> Not and, <decorative>. uh, <laughs> And uh, he was playing a little bit different. Uh, I was already thinking about playing this deck, and the things he talked about in his video were things that I was thinking about, and I agreed with a lot of what he said. And I know this is like looks like a lot of monsters, but for the Infernoid engine, this is actually a small amount. Right. That's why I call the the deck sixty card zoo because I was mostly just doing the zoo, and then if the zoo combo failed, I had Infernoids to back me up. Plus, it gives me a better matchup against basically all of the meta because I can just tribute a dude and banish a card from the grave. Banishing just one whip uh, or rat Pierre kind of like kills the deck a little bit, stops their combo. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, then for the rest of the monsters, I got the uh, Speedroid engine, got the Zoo engine. So three rat, two whip tail. Whip tail is so broken. Why didn't you run three then if it was that broken? Uh, because you don't necessarily want to draw it. You want to get the rat for your combo. Okay. And you can recycle it. So you don't really need more than two. You can dump one in the grave to equip with tiger mortar. Or you can just, you know, search it out. Put it in. You don't really need three. He's really good though because he just banishes stuff. I mean, that's, oh, like, yeah. that's how you win the Cosmo matchup. You just ram into it and vanish. Yeah, because it it's non-targeting, right? Yeah, it sucks, but you, you get rid of their stuff. Exactly. Then I played uh, my only hand trap, Maxi. No Ghost Ogres? Nope, don't like it. Okay. I mean, it's good because it disrupts their engine, but it really doesn't stop them from playing. Oh, true. Okay. Yeah, this card kind of forces them to stop playing, or you just draw a ton of cards and win anyway. Unless you get OTK, but ideally, that won't happen. <laughs> uh, of course, yeah, ideally. <laughs> Uh, then I played the uh, the Kaiju Engine, got uh, the Wind, the Fire, the Water, and the Earth. <laughs> you gotta play all the eights or lower, that way you can still bring out an Infernoid if they're on board. Okay. Yeah, uh, it was kind of funny though, like, uh, there was two matches I played where I played Kaiju Slumber, 
I brought out the wind kaiju on my side of the board, mm -hmm. special Terra Top, got Terra Top's effect, and then went off after that. It was kind of gross. Really? Yeah. So okay. you can still special Terra Top instead of having a normal summon it. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, just a side combo I noticed was pretty good. <laughs> then uh, I played uh, one of the MVPs of the deck. Uh, oh my Snow. god. This card is way too good. Would you ever consider bumping it down to two at all? No, never. No, never. You, you need this card. Like it's so uh, good. It answers. It like gives you answers to things you can't get rid of. If somebody drops a vanity fiend on you, you just flip it down. Just normal summon, flip it down, yeah. and go off. Uh, I actually normal summon this thing probably more times than I specialed it, but it was good every single time I got it. Uh, the really gross thing about her is like most people don't realize, but you can banish cards from your grave, field, or hand to bring her out from your grave. Yeah. So a lot of times, like, uh, one time my opponent summoned, uh, uh, was it, not Max, the, uh, the, the one that makes it so you can't exceed, uh, what is it called? Uh -huh. Help me out here. Um, Valor? Ghost Ogre? No, no, the, oh. the, the C card that you can special and they can't exceed. Oh, Flying C. Flying C, there we go. There we go. <laughs> my opponent oh my summoned Flying C on me. And I just banished it and brought out snow and booked one of their dudes oh down. Oh my god, <laughs> I didn't even think about yeah, that. Yeah, it was just, I was like, okay, I don't know why you sided that in against me, but okay. Yeah, I mainly side out playing C in my, ex my side deck anyway, so. Yeah. But that's uh, that's the monster lineup. Oh, okay. Now we're going to the that's spell a, lineup. That's a big stack of monsters. Yeah, yeah it's pretty big. <laughs> uh, we got Free Barrage. The most it's expensive a, it's card a must. In the deck. It's <laughs> worth the price tag, people, trust me. Okay. Uh, Three grass is greener. And, and another one. Uh, the, the grass was definitely green for me yesterday. Uh, <laughs> I got this in my last game of my last round in tops. I actually opened this and barrage. Oh. And it was just like I, I won. It was yeah. there's nothing he could do. Reveal two cards, win. It's yeah. like, oh, okay. Uh, then I got uh, three void vanishment. Uh, really good card. What does it do? Uh, so you pitch any card you want. Search your deck for a void spell or trap card, and then add it to your hand, and then you cannot special summon uh, monsters for the rest of the turn except for Inferno monsters. And so it works like a, I want to say like pot of duality, so if you special summon you can't activate this, and then if you use this you can't special summon uh, anything. It's, but. More, it's more like a, a rota, but it just has a stipulation you can only special summon Infernoid. Okay. So you can still drop an Infernoid after you do this. Oh, okay. but the thing is, you do your combo first, and then you play this after. Oh, okay. So that's yeah, that's what yeah. I was trying to get at. Okay, yeah. so it does work. All right. So you can do it that way. Uh, the really cool thing about this is it actually does have another effect. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. If uh, so, if you're, uh, I think it's let's see, if an Infernoid monster you control battles an opponent's monster, you can send it to the graveyard and banish both the monsters. Oh. So it's kind of problem solving there too. I only did it. I did it once, and my opponent was super salty about it. I mean, I would be too, you know, but the more you know, right? Yeah, but if they're just going to swing over one of your little dudes and you don't really need it in Grave, you just banish it and get rid of their dude. Alright. Yeah, and then I played uh, two Void Imagination. Um, this How? card's really good. Uh, you don't want to play more than two, though, because it can give you some wonky hands. Yeah. Uh, funny story, I never resolved this all day, though. The one time I got it, it uh, I got NS, or, no, Twin Twistered. Got twin twisted, so I oh, it's that anyway. day. But uh, still really good, uh, and you can always, if you already have the trap in your hand, you can pitch the special that or to add this, and then special the fusion guy afterwards. It's pretty okay. good. Okay. Uh, two twin twister. This is a must for any deck right now. I think. Like I realize you don't want to always pitch cards from hand, but people are playing so many back row that's so devastating right now. And plus, you have cards that you just you can just automatically pitch because they work yeah. in graveyards. So. It works even better in this deck. Uh, but yeah, it's really good. Then uh, two kaiju slumber, cards broken. Enough said. <laughs> uh, did you want to see it at three at some points? No. Uh, it was actually it's stupid. I run a sixty card deck, playing two slumber, and I still got the same thing that happened when I was playing pure zoo. I would open a kaiju slumber and then draw a couple turns later and draw another slumber, uh -uh. and not be able to play it because I opened the kaiju. That's crazy. But every time I opened Kaiju, with the exception of one game, it was good because you can just trib any problem things. Okay. Uh, you know, just tribute that uh, clear way and get it off the board. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Salty. Yeah. Uh, playing too tanky because uh, sometimes you really just need that search. Uh, two uh, different letter uh, colors there. Yeah, I got purple red. All right. Not bad. Ideally, I'll have uh, two purple at some point. But... They're still That's good. That's what I got. Uh, and then I was playing one, one for one. Understand. Uh, never played this card the entire day. 
Never grinded seen. it out every single game because it's just for like a turn one, you can drop a Decatron, uh, send a guy so they can't board wipe you. Okay. You know, and then go into your zoo combo, so you just stop like a Kaiju Slumber, or any of that stuff. So it's good game one, but game two, I always sided it out because I was siding into traps usually or a Geki or something, board wipes. That's cool. Uh, that's it for the spells. Good, a solid spell line, yeah, it looks like. Pretty good. Very consistent. I was very pleased with the deck. Uh, traps, three void feast. Uh, I've seen a lot of people run one to two. Why three? Uh, because you want to get this card every single game. Okay. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you open multiple copies because you can activate it. And it says send a void spell or trap from your field or hand. So you can just pitch the other one to use the effects. Oh, yeah, that's so pretty good. It does not matter if you get two, you just want to get this card. Yeah. You just you bring out double Decatron and lock down your opponent. And they're just sitting there like, hmm, pass. <laughs> <laughs> They might try to attack your guys, but you still you lock them down for one, two turns easy. Or you can do what made my opponents really salty all day is I play three copies of this card. This oh, wait, I've heard about this yes, tag. Yes, this card, uh, read it out for you. Spiritual Swords of Revealing Light. This was the like MVP of the day. This card won me so many games, especially against Cosmo, because sometimes you just need to stop their OTKs, because they'll, they'll board wipe you, you can't stop any of their stuff. And then you just flip this, negate an attack, or if it's in grave, you just they can't attack you directly. So you pay a K, negate an attack, do that as many times as you want. Or if it's in your grave, it doesn't matter if it was sent through that turn, you banish it, they can't attack you directly that turn. It's like a free... There was one game I played Grass is Greener, turn one, milk three of these things. Oh. I was like, okay, I got this game. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, was, uh, some people like say, no, two, because you don't want to draw it, but that's wrong. You want to play three because you do want to draw it, because mm -hmm. it is really good. You can also use it, uh, pitch it for like twin twisters, and yep. still works no matter what. Yep. And then if you do the the, uh, the lock with the decatrons, you can stop them from attacking your decatrons, and then just swing over whatever they brought out. That's not bad. Yeah, that's cards, pretty good. <laughs> cards really good. People are getting salty about it all day long. Oh, you spreading that salt. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so let's go to the extra deck. Pretty standard lineup. Uh, three Dryden. Three Dryden. Or right, two Dryden, sorry. Wow. <laughs> no, no, two Dryden. Uh, uh, two Broad Bowl, two Tiger Mortar, and one Borbo. Uh, I play double Emerald because I needed it, like, all the time. I mean, with your deck, you mill with grasses greener yeah, and plus exactly. you just put it back. You gotta get that. Uh, one Gagaga Samurai, and this bad boy, so good. Uh, this against Zoo, like, they play the Slumber card. You can, like, triv off your guys, banish cards from the grave, and leave him on board, detach. Their Slumber won't resolve. And then he also mills five cards when you summon him, so he jumps stuff in your grave. Um, he was really good in the, uh, was that the Invoked deck matchup I played because I put that on board and they couldn't really do anything about it. Okay. And I just like, they swing into it, I just keep them alive, dump some stuff in my grave, came back with some uh, Infernoids the next turn. There we go. Uh, then I got the Threes, I got the Totem Bird, the Invoker. A very expensive Invoker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got the Fusion, didn't bring it out all day, like I said, no imagination. Uh, and then one side frame, Lord Omega. Didn't play it all day, but it's in there. He's a beat stick. 28, yeah. man. Uh, no, just, I mean, he's good. Just didn't have the opportunity to use it. It's kind of situational with the build. Yeah. You're ideally just going into the zoo combo and locking down your opponent, so you shouldn't really need him. But so, he's, he's there if you need him. Yeah, so, stupid question. Um, why didn't you play two of the fusion? Uh, <laughs> well, I originally had two in the extra. Just so I had targets for both of them, mm -hmm. but uh, after playtesting a little bit, I realized that one extra deck space is tight. Two, you're probably not gonna play more than one imagination in a game, and three, even if you can get both the imaginations, uh, in order to fully utilize this effect, you're dumping almost like every single infernoid you have in the deck into your grave. So it's not really that important. You just want to get the effect once, basically. And then if you get another imagination, you're usually just pitching it for something like Twin Twister or Void Feast or something. Understandable. Yeah, you don't. You really don't need the second one. I never even brought it out, man. <laughs> All right, now, do you have a side deck? Yep. Oh, even with the 60 cards? Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't you have a side deck? You gotta have a side deck. So, side deck, most people are just siding all trap for when they go first uh, in game two, but I was always going second game two, so I didn't really side them in a lot. 
Uh, but I got two anti-spell. I've played a lot of Metaphone matchups. I didn't play any yesterday, but uh, when I went to the uh, YCS, I played five Metaphone matchups. It sucked. Uh, one warning. Warning? Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Okay. Uh, card's broken. Uh, it's one of my favorite cards. It stops a lot of things. Uh, three strike. Uh, two barrier. I would play three, but I do not have a third one. So I was siding the two. Still good. Uh, one Regeki. Two system down for that stupid Cosmo matchup. Uh, it was also really good when I got it against ABC. I just wrecked him. Uh, third Twin Twister. And then for the mirror, playing three Artifact Lancia. Didn't play any mirror, but I got him there just in case. Alright, so any thoughts, last minute comments about the deck and your all love uh, of the deck, I guess? Uh, yeah, as far as the sideboard goes, for the third dimensional barrier, I might drop the warning. Uh, maybe a strike. Not sure yet. Okay. But uh, other than that, uh, the deck was great. It was super consistent. Uh, even when I got like mediocre hands full of Infernoids, I was still able to play. And then usually top deck something that made my board better and win. Uh, the one match I lost to the uh, the Wind Witch Invoke deck, uh, I did open a really bad hand of all the big Infernoids and like a Twin Twister, and I lost that game. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty good though. Very consistent. I love the deck. Awesome. So this is Mastrego coming at you with a the first place deck profile and come right subscribe and will we be seeing you more, Roy? Oh yeah. Awesome. Come right subscribe. See you guys later.